having all these APIs that our applications can talk to are great until you realize that you don't know who's talking to what and where, and you start getting N plus one problems and things get out of control really quickly. So we need some good debugging tools and our friends over at Formidable Labs have created them. It's a program called Envy. It helps figure out what's talking to what and where. It's really cool stuff. We're gonna get right into it. And this video is brought to you by our friends over at Sourcegraph, who have a new AI called Cody that integrates into VS Code. We'll take a look at that too. Let's get right into it. So what we've got here is a Pokemon example. Let's go take a look at the interactivity. So I click on any of our Pokemon here, and then we get all the information about the Pokemon. And this is pretty cool. This is an XJS application. It talks to a GraphQL backend, which in turn talks to the Pokemon API. Now, this page is actually pretty good, but there's another page in here called Bad Page. Now, this bad page has bad performance characteristics, and you can kind of see a little bit of a clue here as I hit refresh and you see the types popping in underneath the Bulbasaur and Ivysaur and Venusaur. So there's something going on here with the performance of this page that we need to look into. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up Envy. So let's go over to Formidable Labs Envy and we can see how we can get started. Now they recommend bringing the web UI into your application. I actually think you can just install it globally and just run it. So we're gonna do that. So we're gonna install the Envy web UI globally and then I'm just gonna run Envy. So what it's done is it's created a web viewer on localhost 9998, and then a web socket on 9999, and that web socket is what our GraphQL server and our Next.js server are going to talk to to send information about the queries that they're making to this web viewer. So let's go take a look. So now it's saying it's listening for traces, it's waiting for information, we need to go send it some information, so let's go and instrument our GraphQL layer and start there. So over in our mono repo, we have apps, where we have our front end, that's our Next.js server, and we've got GQL server, which is our GraphQL server. So over in the GraphQL server, we want to install, in development mode, the NV node adapter. All right, now let's run again. All right, so index.ts has our server for GraphQL server. It goes and brings in our Pokemon resolvers and schema, and then creates the server, which is an Apollo server, and starts it on the slash GraphQL endpoint. So to instrument this, all we need to do is write the top here, bring in enable tracing from NVJS node, and then enable tracing. And then we give it the service name that we want to identify ourselves as. So in this case, we'll just call ourselves GQL server. Now to avoid any issues with the ESLint, we can disable the import order, which would normally say that we shouldn't be calling anything before we import it. The reason that we want to call stuff before we import other stuff is that some of these other imports might actually go and make requests on their own. I know that when I might write an adapter for, say, the Pokemon API or something that requires, say, a, an access key or a jot, I do that right at the start of the import. And... So what that's gonna mean is if I don't put the enable tracing here, I'm not gonna see that request. So let's hit save and see how we go. So to have a look at this, let's go bring up our GraphQL inspector. That's gonna be import 4000 and then slash GraphQL. All right, so I'm gonna take Envy and put that right next to it. Try and give us as much space as we can here. So I'm gonna do get all Pokemon ID and URL and hit the example query and look at that. Holy moly. We actually see the request going to the Pokemon API over here. And then as we click on this, we can actually see all of the information about this. We can see that it's coming from that GraphQL server. We can see what the payload was. We didn't have a payload. We we're just making a fetch request. And we are our response coming back. This is phenomenal. We get to see all the request headers, response headers, all of it. This is just great. I love it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the API that we've got here. We've got get all Pokemon. That really gives us a very limited set of information. It gives us ID, URL, and then name. And that's all it can get us. So that's not all that great. Now get Pokemon takes an ID and you give it some ID of a Pokemon, say 55. I don't know what that is, but let's give it a go. And now we can see over here, we actually are making these requests. So it, it's still tracing us over here. Isn't that great? Pokemon 55. Let's go and see. What was that? That was a, uh, uh, I don't even know. Oh, a Golduck. Okay, sure, whatever. A Golduck. 
comes over here in our data. So now we can see the entire transaction. If this isn't flipping you out, I don't know what will, because this is going to save me so much time. And it's free, and it's open source, and how cool is that? Now, obviously, we want to do the same sort of thing with our app. And we want to go and see how our Next.js app is doing in terms of its requests. So if I go over here to 3000, we can see our Pokemon list again. And I can click, and you can actually see all the requests going through that GraphQL layer to that Pokemon API. But wouldn't it be great to see all the information about the requests that are being made from that Next.js server? Well, let me show you how easy that is. All right, so again, I'll stop it. I'll go in this time, I'll go into that apps front end. And this time I'm going to add, as a development dependency, the Next.js adapter. And then I'll restart. Now, the way that we make the change over Next.js is we go to our Next.js configuration. We require in that MV. Now we get this with Envy, and we can just wrap next config with Envy. But of course, we can also give it an Envy config, so let's do that. Let's give it a service name, in this case, front end. And then just append that on to the end here. There we go. Looking good. All right. All right, so I hit refresh on both of these, and we're seeing that we're getting a React server component request to the GraphQL layer for this initial Pokemon list. Take a look over in the code. Over in the page, we can see that, yes, we are a React server component. And the first thing that we're doing when we're loading is we are loading up all of our Pokemon. So that's then passed on to the Pokemon list, which is a client component. So let's go take a look at Envy again for a second. And we can see that it's actually been marked as a front-end server request. Now, that Next.js adapter is actually doing the work of segregating the requests made from the server and those made on the client. It is so cool. I love it. All right, now as we click on into here, we go to this Pokemon component, and that Pokemon component makes a client request to an API route in Next.js. Let's go take a look at how that happens. So we've got our components, and then we got our Pokemon component. It gets given an ID, as well as some optional data. If you have the Pokemon, you don't have to have it make that request. And then it uses a use effect to go and get that data. Now, since it can't talk directly to the GraphQL server, it talks through an API route, which is down here. And so we've got our API route, which in turn does a request to the GraphQL server. So the client is talking to the Next.js server through an API route. That API route is talking to the GraphQL server on the back end, like a microservice, and that microservice GraphQL server is then talking to the Pokemon API. I know that sounds a little bit convoluted, but if you work in any kind of larger shop, this is not convoluted. This is exactly what you're going to be dealing with day in and day out. And so that's why this is such a valuable tool. All right, so now let's go take a look at what's actually happening here. Now, up on the front end, if we see this right, if we click on just one, in this case, Carmelian, we'd only expect to see one request to this back end, but we're not. We're actually seeing multiple requests. We're seeing two requests to API Pokemon 5, and then two requests to the underlying Pokemon API. So why is that? Well, that's actually showing us truth. And the truth of the matter is, in this case, we are in development mode. We're on React 18. And that means that that use effect over in our Pokemon component is going to get called twice. So how do we avoid that? We can go back over in our Next.js config. And then we can just turn off React strict mode. Now let's take a look. Hit refresh. And there we go. Now we only get the one request to get that Pokemon, in this case, for our Charmander. Isn't that cool? We're actually seeing truth here. We're seeing that React has a strict mode. User effect is getting called twice. The API is getting called twice. And we're seeing that in our instrumentation. That is so cool. All right, now let's try and dig into this bad page here, see what's happening. OK, so we're seeing some interesting stuff. We're seeing that we get a GraphQL request. That gives us our initial list. And then we're getting individual requests for each one of these, grass, poison, grass, poison, grass, poison. Now, there has to be a better way. This is the n plus 1 anti-pattern. We're getting the list, 
And then we're going and individually getting each one of the elements here. So let's go take a look at the code. So if we look over our bad page, the list looks okay. This is exactly the same kind of list that we had over in the good page. So this is getting us all of the URLs, names, and IDs for the Pokemon. But the issue comes with this bad list over here, where it's getting the list of Pokemon, as it should. And then whoever the coder was said, you know what? I also need the types. So I'm just going to go and run a use effect where I go take that list and I make requests to what I know is the good thing here, which is API Pokemon. And I'm just going to do request after request after request to go get that data. So if I had 100 items in that list, I would make 100 subsequent requests to the back end. That's not great. So how do I fix this? Well, let's talk about today's sponsor, and that's Cody AI. So Cody AI is like Copilot on steroids. Instead of just looking at a single file like Copilot does, it looks at your whole project, this whole mono repo. And why is that? Well, Cody comes from Sourcegraph, and Sourcegraph, their whole job is to make code search. And so what they've done is they put an AI on top of their code search. Let's take a look at how cool this is. So we're going to ask it a question. And this question is, give me a GraphQL query that gives us the types of the top 10 Pokemon. So right here in the context, it's telling us that it's looking at eight files, which is a huge change from Copilot. Copilot only knows about the one file that you're looking at. This Cody has gone and looked at our entire repo, figured out that we have a GraphQL server, looked at its schema, and come up with exactly the right query. I kid you not, this is exactly what we would need to get this. In fact, we can even go on to say, give me a fetch for this. And it tells us exactly what we would need for the fetch. How cool is that? And how about let's turn it into a React component? Oh my gosh. This is so cool. This is actually doing this. This is fantastic. <laughs> I love it at the end. Let me know if you need help implementing this component. Well, you've already implemented it for me, so thank you so much for that. So let's go and actually now fix our bad components. So to fix this, let's go and just take the existing bad page and make a good page. Now, what do we really want to do? Well, we want to do what Cody told us to do, which is we want to go and use get full Pokemon to basically get all of the Pokemon information that we're going to need for the entire experience right here as opposed to later on on the client. So as an example, what we need to get, let's go over to our API ID route, and then we'll just grab all of this. Paste it into here. Hit save. And now we've got full Pokemon as opposed to just the ID name and URL. Now over here in our components bad list, we can say that we're getting full Pokemon info for our Pokemon. And we don't need to do any of this typing stuff. And down in here, instead of using our local state for types, we can just use the type information that we already got from the subsequent GraphQL query. So let's hit save. All right, so let's go over to our good page. And now let's hit clear, and we'll try another refresh. And we see that we only get one request going to the GraphQL server. And that is the full request that we just designed that gets you that full set of Pokemon. And now as we click in, we're making additional requests off the client. But we don't need to do that either because we already have the data. We already got all the data that we need on that initial React server component request. So let's go and fix that. So go over to our bad list, which is now effectively a good list. And then we'll just give it the Pokemon data. So we've already got it. So we'll go down here into Pokemon. And we'll say that we want to find the selected ID. Let's make that selected ID. Let's hit refresh one more time. And we can see that this whole page is driven off of that one initial GraphQL query. And after that, no subsequent queries are made off the client. And we know that because we have Envy. And Envy is keeping us in the know about all of the HTTP traffic in our application.
All right, well, I hope you're as excited about this cool open source Envy project as I am. And of course, also the Kodi AI that we took a look at. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And if you like the video, hit that like button. And if you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.